Thank you.
walk too far to turn back now. As I prepared myself for today, during the course of this week, I must confess that the Lord must have spoken to Sister Sue White when she sent me this, this song. And I said, Lord, indeed, you are a part or you are leading me into what I should share with the church on this first Sunday. I've come too far. I can't turn back. You know, somebody praise God. My brothers and sisters, have you ever felt like giving up? The question. Have you ever felt like giving up? Whether it be stop serving Jesus Christ, stop coming to church, stop going to your workplace, giving up on your marriage, giving up on your children. You just feel like you just give up on evil life. You see, those are the times when we ask ourselves the question, what's the use? What am I living for? What's the use of me being here? What's the use of me being a part of this when I don't see anything coming out for me or working out for me? There are times in the best of lives when the temptation to quit is overwhelming, which they establish us. We are encouraged, my brothers and sisters, when there are indicators that our efforts are not in vain. I can say that again. I say we are encouraged when there are indicators that say to us that there are efforts our efforts are not in vain. Nothing is more discouraging than a series of failures, defeats, and setbacks. Come on, somebody. Talk to me, church. Remember last week I shared with you hope in the midst of discouragement. So there's nothing, nothing is more discouraging than a series of failures. Failures behind failures. Everything you attempt, everything you try, you just end up with failures, defeats, and setbacks. It's discouraging. Oh, yes. Those are the times for the church when we are overwhelmed with the odds in life that we feel like giving up.
my God. He went through tough, challenging times. Oh my God, rejection. Oh God. Musicians take a break. Church, tough times hit Paul, but Paul never gave up. Come on, somebody. No. Paul says, Yet I could have confidence, I could have confidence in myself if anyone could. If others have reasonable confidence in their own efforts, That is so branch, that is a branch of the tribe of Benjamin. Paul says, I am a real Jew. If there were, if there ever was one, what's more, I was a member of the Pharisees who demand the strictest obedience to the Jewish law. And I'm zealous, yes, in fact, I harshly, I harshly persecuted the church. Come on, somebody. Paul recount this listen. I was a persecutor of the church. I used to give the church people them hell. Talk to the church in my own term. I used to travel distant miles just to assault and assassinate the Christians because they serve God. But it wasn't until one day. Who went through tough times, who went through challenging times. 
these things. Paul was able to encourage his protege, his mentee, Timothy, the young evangelist. After appointing him to lead the church in Ephesus, he said that Timothy went to some storm. Timothy felt like giving up. And Timothy wrote back to tell Paul. He said, Bishop Paul, I am going through hell down here. Everything I do, they tell me that that's not how Paul would have done it. So he said, I'm finding it hard and challenging to fit into your shoe to serve the people of our soul. He said, I can imagine that Timothy wrote back to Paul and said, Paul, I'm not going to manage this church. This church is not an easy church. My God, they are building up resistance. Can I talk to the church? And Timothy talked about giving up. But Paul penned a letter to Timothy. And he said, dear beloved, be strong in the Lord. Can I talk to you somebody? And he would have explained to Timothy some stuff. And just when Timothy thought that this would have been a letter of transfer from Ephesus to somewhere else, Ending of the letter, God says to Timothy, stay on. He says, stay the course. Don't quit. Am I talking to you, somebody? God says, listen, I'm not moving because you have been here. You are here for a purpose because through your trials, you're going to come forth and stay a goal. If there is many trials, if there are some people to test you, to tell lies. It's not all by yourself. It's because God is with you. Right? 
Christ, my God saved me for, for and wants me to be. Somebody worship God. So, no. Paul says, no. As he wrote to the brethren in Philippi. Dear brothers and sisters, I am still not all that I should be, but I am focusing all my energies on this one thing. Come on, church. Paul says, I am focusing all my energies. Can I tell somebody within the reach of my voice? Stop focusing your energies on people who don't matter. There are some people who don't matter. They only want to distract you. And they're only pretending as if they matter. God will show you. So I don't want to get out here. I'm going to find easier. I don't want to get out here. Hello? Because if they, are, if they matter any at all, come on, somebody, they would have not spent enough time to be focusing on some people who are in bed with you and their mind. Some people see your host. Go up bed. Sober. Right through eight or nine hours of their sleep. Their mind is on your host. So when they wake up, my God, and I walk and look up in a sun like Tom and me, rascal and give me the pam, pam, pam. Come on, somebody. Can I tell somebody, your achievements are much so people. You are really not rich and much so people. But you are tired and drive some people crazy. Come on, somebody, but they don't matter me. Don't have Christ to serve. Driving some people crazy. Come on, somebody. Your educational leveling life. My God, drives some people crazy. Come on, somebody. Help me here. Uh, I, I, I say a little two bedroom house. My God, I might be painting a burnt orange. My God, I'm pretty color green. I can't remember the green on this page. Somebody help me here. I try people crazy. Thank <laughs> you. 
that. He was doing the right thing, but the wrong thing kept on happening to him year after year. I know somebody. I know people within the reach of my voice, whether here or all there in distant places and countries who are watching. Now listen, over and over he kept on doing the right thing, but it ended up being the wrong thing over and over again. Perhaps he felt like he would have turned back and give up. Sometimes David's family looked down on him. Talk to me now, church. I said, David's family perhaps sometimes looked down on him and treated him like he was second class. You know that some of us who are treated as second class have become first class because the first class disappoints some people. They don't like when I preach in this place, but you have many more years to take preaching. Somebody help me here. Hallelujah. I said, we have some parents who have put up some children and treated them. Rules for the top. Anything you did, I dash you away. Get up, 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 get he could have been upset, but he kept his cool. Yes. You know, some of you could have been bitter. Yes. And some of you should have been bitter. Yes. And some of us should have been upset yes. because of the treated, yes. the treatment that was meted out yes. to us. Yes. And we didn't deserve it. We were innocent of it. Yes. Talk to us, somebody.
and state that the enemy and people that decided to be is because what you were in your mother's belly. God ordained you. And if God ordained you and identify and appoint you, there are some things that will be delayed but not denied. You may have said that but not denied. Will somebody help me here? Talk to me in this house. Hallelujah. There are some children in this house. Oh, God, you have several attacks. 
give in to weariness, this fear, frustration, you can lose your strength when you start thinking it's not fear, it's been so long. Hello? Let me come minister to somebody today. It's not fear, it has been so long, it's never going to work out. The energy you need to move, my God, somebody worship the name of the Lord into your destiny is being drained out. Somebody worship the name of the Lord. I'm not saying we should never feel weariness. Weariness will come. I'm saying don't allow it to conquer you. When we are weary, we won't have the passion, the determination, or courage to fight the good fight of faith. Don't let battle fatigue keep you from your victory. Somebody worship God. I said don't let fatigue keep you from the victory. The prophet Samuel had anointed David to be the next king when he was a, just a teenager. But it was 13 years. 13 years had gone by and there was no sign of it happening until one day I feel the Holy Ghost. I said one day I said you have been called. You have been told. Take me back. 
join me viewers next week for continuation.